your sin. The whole of the sin, you know, because the Bible says we all have sin and come short of the glory of God. We fall short. So when you sin, there's a thing called repentance. Go to God with your troubles. Go to God with your failures. I say, sweet Jesus, I'm only flesh. Never strong enough when the devil come test. Me, I beg your mercy and forgiveness. Never again, Lord, will I chance this. Lord, I surrender to holiness. Wash me and purge me from uncleanness. Direct me part and order me step. I've fallen short to you, me confess. This is when you have to turn back, Christian. Who don't repent and come back, Christian. Hurry up on the road back. A full time on the seat and be a I want to say, I'll turn back, Christian. Who don't repent and come back, Christian. Hurry up on the road. Let's start the show. This is episode 61. We are your permanent hosts. John, myself, Keith, and our new permanent host, co-host, Miss Steph. Welcome to the Short Guest Podcast family. Joining Dwayne, who's on We Still Like Sports. John. Myself and now Steph. How are you guys Hi. doing today, Steph? Thank you for the pleasure and honor of joining John and I on this podcast. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so how's everybody doing? <sighs> not, all, not all at once, please. Don't jump over each other. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm fantastic and COVID free and Woo. all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You got a COVID. All right. Big time. You doing all right? I'm good, man. I can't complain. Not today, at least. Okay. Sounds good. I'm doing good, man. That's good. How are you? Man, I'm good. Just got off a boat. You got a chance? No. Off the boat? My my tan is permanent. Um <laughs> you can still tan. I can. I really can. You can get darker. Yes. I did get a little darker. Went uh went on a cruise this week with all of my family. Uh in laws, parents, sister, wife, son. We all went. That was the first time we've done a big vacation. Well, I don't know if family family reunions don't count as a vacation. So this was the first time we really did a vacation. Went on a Royal Caribbean and went out there for a few days and to their private island and also the Bahamas. Had a real, real good time, except Pops got a little seasick. (laughs) (laughs) That was his first cruise. So he got a little seasick, man. He was good like the first day and the second day. Then after we came back from Coco K, man, he was done. And he was a little upset because on the fourth day, I'm sorry, on the third day, when we come back from Bahamas, in the um, dining area where they have the buffet, they serve oxtails. Now, these are oxtails. These ain't like those generic you know, oxtails are not none black folk, none Caribbean folk oxtails. These were Caribbean oxtails. And they served okay. it there. So he was a little upset because he got up to try to go and he went before it opened up. So he wasn't feeling too well. So he went back to bed. <laughs> he missed out. And um, oh, man. there was some tender Aww. oxtails. But yeah, um, had a real good time. Y'all didn't have drama meat on there? Yeah, but he didn't want to take it. My sister tried to give it to him, but he didn't want to take it. So I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. He didn't uh, want to take it. But 
we had a good time. Everybody right, had a pretty right. good time. My, my mother in law got a little bit ill too with the, the way that it was a, kind of rocky out there when we were in the Baham, Bahamian area, but we had a good time. We really had a good time. I enjoyed Coco K. Um, it was a good time, man. We had a real good time. My father in law ate till he couldn't eat no more. My mom had a real good time. My sister had a good time. My wife and son. Had a wonderful time. You know, it's so weird. Me and my wife were talking about it because my son, he like, he follows us everywhere. And I was telling my wife, I said, mm-hmm. man, when we were 16 years old, we tried to get away from our parents. But he wants to go everywhere we go. So it's just kind of like, wow, yeah. you know, we, we think about that stuff. But yeah, we had a good time getting That's prepared cool for think about it. Though. Yeah, it is. We, we getting prepared for another one. Um, for his birthday, he wanted to go on a cruise with Disney. So next month, actually in three weeks, we're going on another cruise. This time with the Disney line. Oh. So, oh wow! What is his birthday? His birthday is April twenty sixth. Oh, he's a Taurus as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, he is. So he'll be when we come back. We come back on that Monday. His birthday is that Tuesday. So, yeah. Okay. So that's what we that's what we did. Um, real quick before I get started. Well, shit, we already started. What I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> if you are on Facebook, please on Thursdays, some Sundays, but mostly Thursday nights at seven to seven fifteen. My mom is online on Facebook. Antoinette Johnson is her name. She uh, has what she calls a blue, blue, blue boom room. And she sells um, a lot of accessories, um, black girl magic items, nice, pretty black girl uh, earrings and dresses and, and all these type of things. So please, if you're on Facebook, check her out on Facebook Live every Thursday between 7 and 715 She's on for about an hour. She does a Facebook live and she does some, has some great, amazing things on their bags, um, bling, bling hats, all those type of things. So check her out whenever you are on Facebook on Thursday nights and some Sundays, but she'll make an announcement when she's on on Sunday. So just want to get that, that shit out there. Just do it. It's, it's awesome when you um, feed into the live show. And yes. she will recognize you and yes. state your name and then end it <laughs> with the, uh, <laughs> end it with, I see you with your blinging self. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I enjoyed her Thursday night. I was cracking up laughing. But yeah, yeah. I got to buy some bling. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. Please uh, represent. Yes. Please represent. So, um, I'm glad that you guys had a good time. I was kind of removed from everything. And uh, <laughs> I know that Steph said that she was <laughs> anticipating me uh, getting back because of everything that was going on. So imagine my surprise. As I said, Steph was anticipating me to get back. I'm standing there, you know, trying to get onto the shuttle bus and van. And Pops looks at me and says, hey, man. Did you see that Will Smith stuff last night? I said, huh? Because I'm looking at him like, how did you see it? You in the room sick the whole time. So. <laughs> we, got, we got Mr. Drew Peoples on to join us today. <laughs> Drew. <laughs> hey, what's going on? What's going on, people? What's going My on? good people. Yes, sir. The Will Smith and Chris Rock Academy Award entanglement mess last Woo. night. <laughs> My grandma say, Paya! <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't usually watch the, uh, I don't watch the Oscars or Grammys, really, so I, mm. when I was on the ship, when I was on the cruise last night, I mean, not last night, but, uh, yeah, it was yesterday, I'm sorry, after we watched a skating show that they have, this ice skating show, they said, hey, uh, around 6 o'clock tonight, we're going to be showing the 94th Annual Academy Awards here. We've we've got a distribution deal with them to show it here on our ship, and we'll be showing it in this theater. I'm like, 
okay, I ain't coming up in here for no four hours to watch, you know, no Oscar show, or whatever, you know. Little did I know that the niggas was going to be showing out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> let's just go down the line, y'all. Let, let's go down the line. Can I say? Go ahead, say, John. Listen, I was, I texted Steph last night trying to come up with, I didn't know we were going to have enough topics. And then she said, hey, I don't know, but um, I just heard Will Smith got into it with Chris. I'm like, hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I missed like an hour or two hours of sleep. Watching this foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause I it. it was kind of late when we were texting. It was, it was late. Yeah. Mm. We were sending each other edited versions, unedited versions, and see this and see that. Like, we black, were on. black Twitter, me. Black Twitter, yes. So, for you all of y'all, black Twitter first. For all of you all that are listening that uh, do not know what occurred, um. Well, this is Tuesday when you hear this podcast. So on Sunday night, which was last night, the Glory. Chris Rock got up to present. Was he presenting an award or was he just doing a monologue? I think he hosted. Okay. Well, no, somebody else was hosting. Oh, he no. Was, oh, well, he was, so it, was Amy, it was Amy Schumer, Wanda Sykes, and somebody else. Sykes it was three women. Hosting. Hall. He was presenting yeah, a documentary okay. thing. I remember now. He was presenting yeah. something about documentaries. And so he got up there and did a little monologue and he made a reference to a movie called G.I. Jane that was made by Demi Moore back in the late 90s, I believe. And Mm -hmm. in that movie, Demi Moore shaved her head. Well, Mm -hmm. um, Jada Pinkett, Will Smith's wife, uh, she has a shaved ball head and it was just recently announced by her that she is dealing with alopecia, if I'm correct. Uh, right, and so she he made that remark, and Will got up on stage. At first, he was Hello, laughing. Now. Yeah, mm-hmm. you and you saw Jada in the back next to him, visibly rolling the eyes behind her head, and um, she wasn't pleased. And so it cut oh. back to Chris. Chris kind of. Say so, hey, and, uh, and Will jumped up there and smacked the fire out of him and went back downstairs. Now, I do have a clip I want to play so you can hear this of what happened when Will went up there and what Will said. So hold on. Let me let you guys hear that. Oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Wow, dude. Yeah. It was a G.I. Jane joke. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? <laughs> oh, I can, oh, okay. So, with that clip, <laughs> the unedited qu- <laughs> clip, Will told <laughs> Chris Rock to keep his wife out of his effing mouth. Mm-hmm. After he slapped the fire out of him. I need thoughts, people. What, what, Drew, let's start off. You are our guest today. <laughs> did you see this live or did you catch it like everybody else after? I caught it right after it happened because I was on Facebook. Uh-huh. Well, I got I was not really on Facebook, but I was like in the um sitting there watching like TV and then I started seeing like, you know, I started seeing Facebook notifications and whatever. On and then people were people were talking about did you was that real was it and when I first saw it I thought it was like something staged you know because the Oscars uh, hasn't been like the most popular mm-hmm. you know as it has been like you know the the ratings are kind of like kind of dwindled a little bit so I thought maybe they were sensationalizing something you know had like a little staged you know episode or something mm-hmm. but when I saw him dropping f bombs I said uh uh-uh, uh wait a minute. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it's kind of real. <laughs> it's kind of real. Mm-hmm. So when I saw that part, I was like, "Man, maybe it is." Because I was like, "No, that's not in his character." You know, I was like, "That ain't in Will Smith's character to do that." Because you know, Will Smith is—you know—that's Hollywood royalty. That's the 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 um 
the he though he's the the, the golden boy of Hollywood making twenty some million dollars a film. He's the safe Negro. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, very much, very much so. Very safe very- Negro. Yes. He, he he is the Negro that most whites feel safe with. So, mm-hmm. and what very I mean, threatening. right? He's not threatening. He's very happy go lucky. Mm-hmm. You've never mm-hmm. seen him right skin tone. Right skin mm-hmm. tone. He's a, he has a non-threatening mannerism about himself because most blacks are threatening to others, and but he mm-hmm. has this soft smile on his face no matter what's going on. He's Will Smith. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And for him to get up and slap the fire out of Chris Rock. I, Steph, walk me through your thoughts on that. Listen, at first, like Drew said, I thought it was fake too. Um, but then I went to Black Twitter um, <laughs> when John and I were unsure about some things. And then when I you know, saw the unedited clips and from different mm-hmm. angles, I was like, oh, he, he hit him. Mm-hmm. Um, my feeling about it, I'm kind of on the fence about all of it. Um, and I was just actually, while um, you were introducing the topic, I went to Twitter, my favorite place on the net, and I was reading Will's reaction to it, um, to everything. And he basically, he was like, you know, I'm sorry if you're offended. He was just like, you know, um, he said, real talk, I'm not the per- person you're upset, happy with. I make podcasts and video games for a living. At the risk of making people pissed off at me instead of that other guy, the world would be a better place if we stopped answering words with violence. So then someone came back and was like, I think the two of you need to hug this out. And Will said, I will when he apologizes to me personally. Mm. Um, now, when this happened, I was, listen, I was trying to enjoy my Beyonce performance and then go to bed. But I was fresh off of a Twitter argument, like a hardcore Twitter argument with former Atlanta mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms. Like Keisha and I went at it on Twitter. Oh no. That was a story for another time. So she blocked me. No, I think I blocked her first and then somebody kept retweeting and then now Keisha has me blocked. Shout out to Keisha. Wow. You know, Um, (laughs) yeah, Keisha and I had words, but, uh, she called me uncivilized and uneducated, but that's a story oh. for another time. Oh, wow. yeah. can I can I say yeah. something real quick? Why why is it that mm-hmm. I see, and this is just from my vantage point. Whenever white folks go at about something, I never hear them call each other uneducated. Why is it always the first mm-hmm. go to with black folks? I don't know. I don't know why that is. I've never come out of my mouth, but I need Keisha to understand that I'm well educated. Mm. Okay. Ahead, Steph. I have my degrees from Clemson University. Mm. So sorry to you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I was I was already kind of hot under the collar. Mm. So then, you know, I'm, I'm like, oh, you know, I, I'm kind of on the fence about it because I have my feelings about Willard and Jada. Um, <sighs> <laughs> and then I have my I have my feelings of about what exactly occurred. Okay. Um, okay. So let's start so, right there. Let's start right there. Mm-hmm. John, where were you? So you already said you and Steph were going back and forth. What were your, your initial thoughts when you saw that this happened? Listen, I don't watch the Oscars. I never intend to watch the Oscars. I don't set time aside to watch the Oscars. In this case, I didn't watch the Oscars, but. Steph alerted me to the foolery that took place last night. <laughs> and um my fault. This it's okay. And once again, I had to be up like at four fifteen this morning. Mm-hmm. And I'm um sorry. No, you no, know, it's okay. Oh no, it's par it's for the right. course. I ain't getting no sleep. <laughs> yeah, I ain't getting no sleep anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, I I I I was fully immersed in to all things social media on the big three, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Wow. And um, people trying to be the first to come up with the unedited version, see the edited version of, of what took place, what was said, and, and then the reaction. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the fallout. So my re- initial reaction, um, of course, I thought it was a work. I thought I was watching a wrestling promotion. Mm-hmm. 
um, where someone said uh, the heel said something that the baby face didn't like. And <laughs> the baby face responded in kind. Right. That being Will Smith or Willard Smith. I'm stealing that uh, stuff. Willard Smith. Got it. Uh, but then as I slept on it for three hours and 42 minutes, <laughs> according to my Fitbit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my, the, uh, the jovial nature, uh, that I was exposed to with all the reactions, uh, from Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram slowly turned to disappointment and, uh, sadness. And, um, for good reason, uh, cause for whatever reason, uh, Will Smith, or Willard Smith, sorry, his accomplishment in reference to uh, his portrayal of uh, the king, um, Venus and Serena's uh, father, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Richard, was overshadowed by this. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was actually, um, a, once again, I didn't watch the Oscars, but from what I've heard, it was an awesome production. Uh, the person who produced the Oscars uh, was a fan you graduate. Um, shout out to all the Rattlers out there. Mm-hmm. And actually, one of our groupmates, Sana Odom, she actually pointed out a lot of this stuff that uh, was completely overshadowed um, with the diversity and um, people of color actually being recognized last night uh, with uh, Academy Award victory. And we are now talking about this and we're probably going to be talking about this uh throughout the week it's probably going to be on tmz well of course it's going to be on tmz at 7 30 this evening uh in my area and um i was deeply sad uh i don't know if i want to go any uh, deeper into my thoughts or whatnot oh yeah we're gonna go um, in there we're gonna hit it mm -hmm. we're gonna touch every surface yeah because we need to we are but my initial thoughts, once again, they were initially jovial, and then as uh, the sun rose, uh, it turned to sad. Okay. And I'll stop right there. That's cool. That's cool. I will tell you guys, for me, I thought it, you know, when I when my, when my pops told me about it, and then um, I started seeing all you guys' text messages coming through, I was like, mm. I watched a video of it. I was like, okay, it seemed like a work. Like that's what they say in wrestling when it's fake. A work. Yeah. It was a working mm-hmm. slap. Even had the sound effect to it, right? And somebody had slowed it, it down. Did. And I still thought I'm still kind of on the fence of it being a work. But the one part that has me thinking that it is real, and I think it was st- either Steph or Drew touched on this. It may have been John. I got y'all mixed up. I don't know, <laughs> but. <laughs> when he started cussing, like in that clip I played earlier, mm-hmm. that's when I was like, uh-uh. No, it was Drew that said it. And he started mm-hmm. cussing. Drew, that's that took for me too. Drew, that, that took me like, I was like, okay. Will Wait, ain't playing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> West Philadelphia came. I don't even, I, never, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember him using f bombs in his movies. Right. No, he never curses in his music. Not in his music. Not in his music, no. uh, Movies. In the movies, he's cut. He's cursed. He cuts. Yeah. He's he's cursed. Cursed. He, he really lets it fly like in Bad Boys. You know what I'm saying? The other movies, he try to keep in the PG rank. You know, he never yeah. really. Bad Boys, he lets it fly. <laughs> other than that, you're really not catching Will Smith cursing that much in movies. Right. So right. here's the next question I have. After he slapped him, he went back, sat down, you know, and he said what he said, which we played in the clip. Uh, let's get thoughts on Chris Rock. Number one, what he said again, he was making reference to Jada Pinkett shave hair. If you guys don't know, alopecia is a, is a, uh, autoimmune disease, skin disease that can cause hair loss on the scalp and other parts of your body. I, I know people that have that, that suffer from that, but I also saw and remembered 
that Chris Rock was going in on Jada Pinkett about five years ago, I think, when Jada was mm-hmm. boycotting the Oscars for Will because I guess mm-hmm. Will didn't get nominated for that movie where he played the guy, the NFL doctor, I think. Or right about the con- about the concussions or something like yes. that. Concussion was it? Yes. Yeah. And Chris Correct. Rock went in on that. that. Of- yeah, mm-hmm. he went in on on Jada. Then basically alluded to who gives a shit about her coming to the to the Oscars. Right? Um, she's mm-hmm. a nobody. I've also heard that there's been a couple of times where we'll, uh, the Oscars have had to edit um, Chris Rock because of what he has said to others during a broadcast. Like there was a reference made to Oprah and Gail being in a relationship that and Gail was in the audience and it was pretty cringe. And I guess people, they had to edit it out. So what I want to know is what were your thoughts on, first of all, the comments that Chris Rock made, the reaction and who was wrong, who was right, who was justified. What, what happened? Like what, what are your thoughts? And we could, Let's start off with you, Steph. What what were your thoughts behind the whole picture of what happened? Um, well, first let me say this. Um, I don't care about Jada. Mm-hmm. Um, let me put that out there. I'm not a fan of Jada. Used to be. It's, it's well um, documented. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> in that sense, as far as Chris saying what he said to her, I have no feeling about that. But on the other hand, I just, you know, it's, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago when we touched on cancel culture a little bit. Chris is a comedian. Um, you can't say anything anymore because everybody's sensitive to something. Um, now, knowing that she has alopecia, uh, knowing that she's, she's dealing with this, I felt it was a tad bit insensitive. But at the same time, I have to ask, like, as far as Will's reaction, if somebody mentioned Jimmy Kimmel, if Jimmy Kimmel had said that, would he have punched Jimmy Kimmel? If Dave Chappelle had say, said that, would he walk up and slap Dave, Dave Chappelle? I'm going to answer that one for you. Heck no, he would not. You don't think so, um, Steph? If because Eddie he, Murphy... But Steph, but Steph, no, remember, no, he did slap he that guy over... Dave. He did slap that white guy overseas, though, for jump, trying to hug him or kiss him or something. Like, he I wouldn't have slapped uh, Dave Chappelle. <sighs> Okay. Big he room. wouldn't have slapped Dave. What you say, Drew? I said, nah, he wouldn't, nah, he wouldn't slap Dave. Because mm-hmm. okay. let me tell you something. Excuse my language. Dave is with the shit. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't slap Dave because it would have been a whole brawl and they would have been like, you know what? These these black folks can't come back to our island. <laughs> 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 you can't let them come back. They don't let them out of here. And I can't go back for real. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> did you see the shots of the audience and their faces? And shout out to Lapita because Lapita, her her facial expressions did it for me. That's how I knew okay. what was going on with her. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> he was, but you know, and I felt so horrible for Will Packer because this is his night. He was directing the Oscars. He had an all black production team. All of this stuff, like it was his time to shine and. You know, he made a statement saying, I'm bringing Atlanta to the Oscars, but they bought, bought Philadelphia, they bought New York, they bought, you know what I'm saying? It, you know. And so, um, as in life, we still get the short end of the stick. Go ahead. Yeah. Because I, I don't feel I like that's an accomplishment to me, in my opinion. I don't mean to cut you off. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like I that's an accomplishment saying. because I get what you're they saying. always, that's why I don't watch them because they want to put mm-hmm. us front and center. Oh, sure. Yeah, you gave us an Oscar. What? Black folks get an Oscar. Black men, shall I say, get an Oscar once every five, six years when they want to dole one out. You don't see really any black movies win. I think the last time a black movie won was, what was that movie called? Um, Moonlight. 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 Mm -hmm. Black women don't win. The last Best Actress Oscar winner was Holly Berry. And look at the role she won for. Uh, Yeah. Same thing with the Grammy. So I don't watch them, but I understand the significance of a guy, a black guy directing the Oscars. But to me, that's not a big enough stamp. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
you know, you're good. You're good. And I think for me, it, it, it all happened so fast. But I'm going to be honest, and a couple of people are going to kill me for this, but I felt really, really bad for Will. I did feel bad for Will because, A, you know, and I, now I want to read his book. I remember before I said I didn't want to read his book. <laughs> somebody was telling me how he said he doesn't feel like he defends the women in his life enough. Mm. Um, so I want to read that. But I felt really bad for Will because I think this is something that had been building, and I could be I could be wrong. Been building, and at that very moment, he broke and was like, I can't take it anymore. And, you know, keep my wife's name out of your mouth. And then, two, this was... Um, what could be argued is like the the most important night of his career. Real, he won for best actor for King Richard, which I feel was well deserved because that movie was surprisingly great. I still like he it he did well in the movie because to me, don't kill me, y'all. Will can't act his way out of a wet paper. Bag. <laughs> okay. so, <laughs> love Will Smith, but Will. Will's not a, a versatile actor. He doesn't have any range. He plays every character the same way. He cries the same. He is it's <sighs> like on cue. But he did a wonderful job as Richard Williams and he won it, but you had to spend that moment apologizing for what you did before. And then, you know, huge shout out to Denzel Washington and Tyler Perry because I saw a meme where they said you know, Denzel and Tyler quickly held an emergency community meeting like the church deacons <laughs> that they are. Right. <laughs> they pulled him aside and was like, no, no, no. So, you know, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. Like, you know, being your brother's keeper. So I'm I'm kind of on the fence with how I feel about it. Um, you know, this man doing all of this and, you know, he was defending his wife, protecting his black queen. But how many times has this woman embarrassed him publicly? Okay. And then now it's like, there yeah. you go. So, so that's just my feeling. Yeah. And, and that's Drew. How when you saw that go down, right? Because I'm, I'm kind of on the fence with it too, but I, I want to get your perspective. What were your thoughts about the whole thing as a whole when, you know, everything came out? As a whole, because it's it's, to me, it's so many co factors in the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I want to start on the Chris Rock side because. First of all, Chris Rock is a comedian, mm -hmm. and co comedians basically get like a rite of passage in a sense where they can, they they are the ones who be, are able to exercise the most freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. They can say things that most people can't say. They they're allowed to be more offensive mm -hmm. because it's because of the because of the the um the arena that they're in, you know, mm -hmm. they're in the, they're usually in the stand up world or they're on the stage and that is their stick. That's their thing. And they get a uh, full range to do that. But also as a comedian too, especially a black comedian, they know that in the rules, especially when you play in a black club or you have a black audience or, or a black target that it could go either way. It yeah. could it could be successful, or somebody could climb up on the stage and knock your brains out. Right. So, <laughs> and if you've been to any black, if you've been to any black comedy club, you may have seen it happen once or twice. Yeah. You step on the wrong person, and it don't go right. Right. So it's kind of like it's, it's an occupational hazard to me. Yeah. Now I just know just like because you know, and, but but see the thing about Chris Rock, we love him because he is brash, mm -hmm. and he does say what he wants to say. And, you know, and he's offensive and, you know, lots of times it's, it's, it's offensive, it's funny, but it's still, it's offensive, but it's still funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So starting on that part, I, I understand, you know, and, and, that's, and, and I know that I, I have, you know, I have a few friends that are comedians. Sometimes they, they want to push the joke. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, so he, so now he's got his segment in the Oscars. He's on international TV and this is his chance to push the joke. But I think it was just, I think all around it was bad timing because it's a time and a place for everything. Mm -hmm. I think an entanglement joke would have went off much more smoother. You think so? But the, was it, to me, the joke about, because I don't know how many of y'all might have paid, but she's, they've been super successful with the whole Red Table Talk series. Mm -hmm. And she, mm -hmm. you know, she, she has a, a very large audience, especially about of women and when she became vocal, I think she, I, I want to say that she did an episode about it because people kept asking her, you know, Facebook is, a, is was their platform. 
And, you know, the, the comments going to come in on Facebook. People going to ask all the personal questions. So they're like, why you keep wearing no raps on your head all the time? You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> right. like, why you got these cars on? <laughs> right. You know? So she was felt the need to address it. And she came out and said that she had been struggling with alopecia. She was still wearing, like, short styles and different stuff, trying to, you know, cover it up. But then eventually, I guess, on her Twitter, or Twitter, I think, or Instagram, she came out and said that, you know, she is, you know, she suffered with alopecia and she wanted to cut all her hair off. So, mm-hmm. so, like, you never really know what people are dealing with behind closed doors, especially since, you know, on, on the, and all of this is kind of coming on the back end of that whole open relationship, August Alcina entanglement situation. So, to me, the whole the thing about the you know the the, the GI Jane thing it was kind of like the icing on the cake because as you have already mentioned, Keith, that previously they had um, evidently him and Chris Rock have had they had some history, mm-hmm. you know, with the different comments that he's like said over the years. You know, the last time we basically called her non non factor back in the other Oscars. I think it was like 2016. And then I think from somebody had brought to my attention that like over the years, they like in different radio interviews, Chris, you know, Chris had done, said some like some slick stuff about Jada. And I think this was like a culmination of stuff. This was a buildup, mm. you know, to me. It was kind of because the way the way that the, the way that the the intensity and the way he was cussing that was like <laughs> keep keep my wife motherfucking name out your mouth yes. you know what I'm saying yeah. and if any like any, if anybody from the hood because you know, everybody was like oh well he you, did you see him he were they they <laughs> smiled he was smiling when he sat at he smiled yeah. and I want to know what all these I want to know what all these Zen Zen and uh, Wusa black people came from. Now everybody, oh my goodness, he, all he did was say something. Uh-huh. But you know, Goodwill, first time somebody said one thing about your mama or one of your one of your kids, hmm. you're gonna be ready to battle. Is you know you what I'm know? saying? On site. Right. And then now you're talking about somebody's wife, you know, and and most most men of, of honorable men want to protect their black woman. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. I think the medical condition thing really was really like the icing on the cake there, but the most imp- the most uh, important part of that to me is that I feel like we forget how old Will Smith is. Mm-hmm. Mm. Will Smith is almost 50, he almost fifty four years old. That's right. He Damn. approach he he approach he approaching granddaddy status. Yeah. Okay. 50, he almost he's almost fifty four years old. He has been in the business since he was what, eighteen, yeah. nineteen years old. Yeah. And he has been the Hollywood he has been the Hollywood gold, the black golden boy all these years making twenty some million dollars a film and he always has to play nice and he always has to be jovial mm-hmm. and he always has to be smiling and turn on and that whole entanglement situation really cast a different light on him. Yeah. So yeah. think about Think about it. I think about it like this. In that whole situation, all everybody had a comment on social media, every meme, every joke, every emasculating item besides the mess he, it, <laughs> that he done had to go through at home with Jada <laughs> and them kids cutting the food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got all this as a buildup. And here Chris Rock is picking, it's picking and picking. You are the face of you. Chris basically was in, was collateral damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you are you are in close you and you within twenty feet of me. Yeah, and you are the first thing I can actually because I can't put my head I can't put my hands on the keyboard game. Yeah, but you twenty feet you twenty feet away and you done said something about my wife. Now I'm gonna let you up. Now I'm gonna let you have it. So that was the that was I think to that that was the build up and it was and I think. Like with the whole situation, because at first Will, well, Jada kind of smirked too, but then Will kind of smirked. But then he's looking over here like, "This is my wife, and we done had, we done been through all this stuff, and I'm still trying to make this woman happy." And here's something. And like, my thing was like, what if that comment would have been like triggering to her, you know, and made her want to hurt herself, you know? Because for for I know how it is from because I I'm I dealing with male pattern baldness myself. I started, you know, when I was. In my thirties, I started dealing with it. So I know how that is. But for a woman, you know, women's hair is they crown and glory. Right. So for mm-hmm. somebody to be losing their hair and going through a traumatic experience, who knows what kind of hell this man going through at home <laughs> with her? You know, this whole situation. Did somebody come joking? You know, about her being bald headed? So that's where I think that's what really tipped him off was that whole, the whole grand scheme of things. 
And then that was the icing on the cake. And everybody know in the hood, sometimes you, they're talking about he was smiling and laughing. You're right. If you, in the hood, somebody, when you see a dude start laughing and he drop his head, he's going to pop you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a crap. Yeah. I, I That's was, what's going on. I will say this. I think that I'm, I, I can applaud. It could be two things right and also two things wrong about this, right? Right. I feel like, number one, and John, you alluded to it early, and I'm going to come to you with it, the level of sadness, right? Because it just took away from the bigger award for him. Because I, I feel the same way about Steph. I'm not, you know, I don't think Will Smith is the best actor in the world. I think his best role that I've seen, I haven't seen King Richard, but he did a great job in The Pursuit of Happiness. That movie right there. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if I can yeah, watch that right movie again. Ahead. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> but it took away from you know, the show, it took away from his award. It took away from him being honored that night for that. I also feel that, you know, comedians do have autonomy. I know that this is different Mm -hmm. times now where, you know, everything is so sensitive. You can't say this, you can't say that, you know, and I get it, right? Some things you just have to be more um, aware of your surroundings when you're saying things. I think that I feel like if this stuff did not happen these past during COVID (laughs) when we were home, if the red talk table did not happen, I don't think the reaction would have been the same. I think that Will has been really embarrassed and I'm not saying he's innocent now because you know, there was reports years ago when he made that movie uh, with uh, what's her name? Eva. God, I can't think of a name, but you Eva remember Mendez. The, Eva Mendez. Mendez, and and well, yeah. and also with uh Margot Robbie, he made that movie with her. Mm-hmm. There was big talks about them having an affair, but I right. think, and I'm not trying to say one outweighs the other because an affair is an affair is messed up. I do believe that it's a little bit more icing on the cake and cherry on the top of that cake when it's publicly known and you're flaunting it in front of your partner's face and now the public right. knows because when that red talk table conversation happened when Will was at that table, I've man. never seen a man publicly show hurt and pain like Will Smith did when he was sitting there trying to laugh it off. And I think mm-hmm. that is when he wanted the slap that he did to Chris Rock. That's what he wanted to do to Jada but we know how that would have turned out at that time. I'm serious. <laughs> Listen to me, though. That slap that he did, let me tell you something. That when he went up there and he slapped Chris Rock, people think he was defending his wife. Yeah, he may have felt that way because, hey, you're talking about my wife, but I believe that slap was for Jada. It was meant for Jada because I believe at that moment, Will Smith is sitting front and center at the Oscars, and he's thinking, uh-huh. okay, my main competition is my brother to the left, Denzel, for uh, that movie that he played in for Apple TV. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's King Arthur or something. But anyways, Macbeth, I'm sorry. That's my, that's my main competitor. And I have a good chance of losing to him, but I also have a good chance of winning. And once uh-huh. again, I'm front and center, and I am the butt of jokes because of you. It was indirectly a joke at me because I think Chris Rock wanted to tell that joke about entanglement, but he didn't because he probably felt like, okay, this could go left real bad. You know what I mean? He didn't expect. I think he was clear, really surprised that Will got up and did that because he, he thought he took the easy way out, but he didn't realize like a lot of people realize Will had had it and it ain't got shit to do with, his wife protecting her. It was, he, he done had enough of this and he has been the butt of jokes because of that red talk table. And I think when he went up there to slap Chris, he didn't put his full force into it because he saw Jada's face. Because honestly, Will ain't no small man. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will, Will is a big man. Chris is a little man. If Will had really put his all into that slap or fist or whatever, Chris would have been on the floor. 
Right. Yeah. He wouldn't have staggered. He had him in there punch him. Yeah. He he. But I think it was just a culmination of everything that Jada has put him through publicly, and having to hear his daughter say these things. You know what I mean? And it's just like he created that avenue on social media, on Snapchat, you know, and Instagram where he's doing all these wild and crazy things. Not because, oh, my God, I done turned 50. I'm having a midlife crisis. No, he needed an escape. He needed to escape this shit because he knew it was coming and it came. And so he needed to continue to, 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 to get out there because this was embarrassing for his brand. And then you get past the brand. Now it's embarrassing for Willard Smith, the man. You know what I'm saying? That's embarrassing right. because they've done such a good job of keeping things private. And so they messed around and got entangled with this young boy. And I'm sure Will knew about it, but they messed around yeah. and got entangled with this boy, August Alcina, the, the R&B singer, and he couldn't keep his mouth closed, you know? Mm-hmm. And so now everything's out there and the golden boy, Will Smith is now the butt of the jokes. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like Jada, you're a bad person. Jada, this Jada, that no, it's, oh man, Will Smith. Oh man, will this will that. And then the constant, um, I don't even know what you want to call it. Uh, she is, she's in love. She's in an obsession with Tupac Mm -hmm. Shakur. That man been dead for 20 something years, but she is still up. That's like she talks about that man like that was her only love of her life. And nobody will mm-hmm. ever live up to that standard. To the point where Will Smith went on the Breakfast Club and gave out his insecurities about Tupac. Do you know how oh, really? humiliated? Yeah. Yeah, it was on the Breakfast Club with him and when him and I Martin. Didn't see that interview. I gotta go back and watch that. Go back and watch yeah, it. Please. They were promoting bad boys, him and Martin. And it's humiliating. You know what I'm saying? Like to know that your wife still fantasizes about this man that's been gone for 20 plus years. Then on top of that, the reason why it's coming back around is because now we find out that she was involved with this younger guy. And so you've had to play this part of being Mr. Ro- the black Mr. Rogers for America for all these years. And now around you, you know, your your castle is crumbling. Your, your your children are out of control, so to speak. They 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 doing all this crazy shit, you know. They, you kind of overlook that and just said, well, we know they were kind of out there, you know. Had to deal with the Scientology rumors, all those things that he, you know, his PR people working overtime to try to hide. But Jada went out there and created this own avenue for herself, and boom, here we are. And now, on my defining night. Here comes another piece of shit coming my way. And, and I just think he he looked at Jada and he wanted to slap the shit out of her, but he knew that would be the end of his career in life as he knew it. So he had to go to the next best thing was a person right. who said something, in my opinion. Um, could it have been handled differently? Sure, it could have. But we have to always remember and I said this last, I think last week and a week before that, you cannot, even though there wasn't a physical attack on, attack on Will, we can't dictate how a person responds when we attack first. We can't. If I'm attacking you verbally, physically, whatever the case is, I can't dictate and say, oh, that's going too far. I attacked you first. I didn't have a reason to attack you because I can guarantee you this as brash as Chris Rock is, as, as thought provoking and, and, and how he likes to push the boundaries like another, like all the other comics and everything. You could not have paid money, cash, cold money for Chris Rock to turn and say something about Denzel or Mrs. Uh, Washington. Nope. Okay. Exactly right. You couldn't have paid him cash to say something about Mr. Washington or Mrs. Washington. Because number one, John David would have probably bum rushed him on that stage before Denzel got up. Okay, because John David don't play about his mama. That Denzel uh, actor, and I'm sure they other kids don't. But 
you know, he didn't do that. It was just an easy joke, but he thought of it just like, I, cause I, the alopecia thing is, is, is bad, you know, and he didn't have what I'm, what I read. He didn't know about it. So he just made an off color joke thinking, you know, it was, it was what it was. It's just, Hey, she, she likes to shave. Look now she could do GI Jane too. He could have easily went for the other thing. Um, uh-huh. With the entanglement thing. Another thing that I do want to say, and again, I'm, I'm blaming Jada for all of this, but I do want to say this. <laughs> I'm blaming Jada. Um, two things. Number one, black men, that's what you're supposed to do. Regardless if she's been in an entanglement right. or she ain't been in an entanglement, you're supposed to take up for your wife. That's number one. Yes, number two, white people. I'm going to need you to stay out this conversation because guess what? Y'all was deathly silent when January 6th happened, but all of a sudden, this slap Ooh. happened, and this is the worst thing that done happened in history. I'm going to need oh. y'all to shut up for a minute. Oh. Say that. Okay? Say that. I'm just going to need y'all to shut up for a minute, because guess what? If that had been um, uh, Holly Hunter or uh, what was the other, Jenny McCarthy up there talking about... Um, you know, um, 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 let's say, uh, what's the guy's name that hosts the, um, not the Oscar, he he hosts the other award show, the English comedian. I can't think of his name. Oh, the guy that does the um, car karaoke. Car- uh, what's his name? Oh, God. Well, James he, Corden. James Corden. Yeah, that's him. If he had got up there and told a joke about that, about a previous relationship with Jenny McCarthy and Jim Carrey, and Jim Carrey went up there and slapped him, you know what the response would have been? You never know what's yeah. going on behind closed doors. Jim Carrey has all these mental issues. He's been dealing with a lot. Depression is real. His girlfriend committed suicide or killed herself. You guys just, you know, we need to take it easy on him. Mm-hmm. That's what it would have been. So white people, especially my white listeners that are listening, stay out of this conversation. Because y'all been deathly quiet about January 6th. Mm. So I'm sorry for taking that long. John, you said that you were sad. I want to touch on what made you sad about this whole exchange. Uh, I thought it could have been dealt with a little bit more eloquently. And once again, this is just, this is just my opinion. Uh, Yes, you're supposed to defend your wife. But not with cameras. Not with all eyes on you, especially on your culminating night. Granted, um, Chris Rock is comedian, as uh, Drew alluded to before. And I took it as a joke. Now, once again, I have no uh, vested interest in this because I don't follow uh, many celebrities anyway. I have um, no idea of what happens on uh, the Red Table Talk. I had no idea that Jada Pickett Smith uh, was suffering from alopecia. Judd is far removed from everything. So <laughs> I know, I hear you. I, I don't, and, and quite frankly, I honestly, I don't, I don't care. Mm. I, I, I have to say, it's, okay, uh, rich people problem, a first world problem, right? Uh, mm-hmm. When it comes to stuff like that. Uh, but for me, yes, defend your wife. But I thought instead of having an immediate visceral reaction and removing yourself from your seat and placing yourself on stage and transgressing against the man who uh, will not file charges, but he could do that in the parking lot, backstage, man to man. Yeah. That's, that, that would have been my desired outcome uh, when it comes to something like this, because now, once again, it was all jokes uh, all last night. I was like, "Wow, this is uh, this is wow, this is funny, this is um, unprecedented." But it's like, man, Negroes can't have anything nice nowadays. They gave you a whole night uh, full of accolades and stuff like that, and it's been sullied by the slap heard around the world. Uh, involving two black men, two prominent black men in the entertainment space. Let me ask you something, and, John. Um, Let me cut you off here. If you were in that same headspace, do you think you would have waited till you went to the parking lot? Uh, 
I don't know what I would have done. And once again, I understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I get what you're saying too. Time and place, time and place, regardless, regardless of all the stuff that Will has gone through. Mm -hmm. And I know that might be hard and that might be, you know, extremely hard. I get it. But me personally, I'm not carrying my big 329 pound ass (laughs) on the stage. And slapping the shit out of five foot eight, one hundred sixty eight pound Chris Rock. Because regardless of the fact, (laughs) he's holding the L. He's holding a big L for this. Yeah. And it's at the crux of the person who was offended by the joke that he initially was not offended by. But I just, I I think it would just been better, better served if he would just met him like after the break, Mm -hmm. because they went to a commercial break after that. Uh, So. And met him in back, met him backstage. If it was, if they had to, you know, be some furniture moving, there's going to be some furniture moving. And he could have told him, "Hey, man, I didn't appreciate that joke. My wife didn't appreciate my joke, that joke. Were you aware that she was suffering from that?" And you know, once again, that's a tough ass. I might be asking for a whole lot, but I'm not going to sit here and condone uh, or choose violence because you didn't like what somebody said in a jovial setting. Or the jovial manner. I'm not going to sit here and condone that. Yes, I applaud him for, for uh, defending his wife, mm-hmm. but I don't apply the act or or the execution. The execution was wrong and is at the wrong time. My opinion. Right. Some people might not agree with that, and I really don't care. Shit. But I was you know, I was sad because once again you had to bring up, hey, white folks, stay out of this conversation because mm-hmm. they have something to say. Uh, that's going to be totally out of context of what is actually going on. Mm-hmm. And um, we shouldn't be having this particular conversation of what was right and what was wrong. Because it should have happened. No. That's just my thought. No. I took it as a joke. Some other people probably didn't take it as a joke. That's fine. I thought it was a funny joke. I thought it was a joke, too. But if that's the case, that's the but if, if if you can't take a joke, stay your ass home. <laughs> well, I took it as a joke as an outsider, right? I yeah. I I couldn't. I don't know, and that's why I was going to ask you. Putting yourself in his shoes, we can look at it from our perspective as a person. I want to put myself in that shoe because I'm, I'm not having an open relationship and placing myself under that 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 scrutiny of the public lens. So. Well, I mean, well, not even. okay. so if you're a public figure and there's some things that have been coming out about your wife and you and you're trying to work it out. Right. Not that you put yourself there purposely, but stuff is coming out. Mm -hmm. You know how things are getting leaked. And this is your night. This is your crown tonight. Um, Do you think you personally. uh, Working through things with you and your wife and then your wife is also dealing with a. um, disease or illness um, that she has publicly disclosed that she's dealing with. And someone made an offhanded joke about it right in front of your face. Do you think you would have had enough restraint? I'm asking you, John, would you have had enough restraint to one in five, one in 500 people suffer from alopecia. She's not special. She's not the only one suffering from alopecia. Plenty of men out here with male pattern bald suffering every day. They're very self-conscious about that every day. Me personally, I'd have seen him in the parking lot. Okay. Okay. I, I respect your take. I would have knocked his ass out. That's me. Yeah, in the parking lot. I would have knocked his ass out in the parking lot. Oh, no. He would have caught the hands on the stage. But I'm reckless. I know that. <laughs> so, okay. Well, then place I, your civil liberties at stake then. That's I, fine. I, no I, I can admit I'm, that. I'm not doing that. I'm reckless. I'm not doing that. You, you have a more cerebral approach to things. And, and that's a good thing. Because then it would yeah. have taken away from your from your night. You know what I'm saying? And it did take away from mm-hmm. his I would have joined at my night. And he would have caught a two-piece of the biscuit in the, in the parking lot. Because <laughs> I'm going to say this. I have not seen, and me, this is me personally. I'm not saying it's, it's not happening. But I haven't seen one headline on an article or anything talking about him winning that best actor. Hell no. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, right. At all. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Not one. And like I said, that was supposed to be, this is what was supposed to be the biggest night of his career. Yeah. Because, you know, Will was disappointed when he didn't get that that Oscar for Ali. 
So it's like was he up for happiness man. too? Pursuit of happiness as well. I don't think I don't, so. I, I don't think he was nominated. He wasn't nominated. Okay. Mm-hmm. He okay. wasn't. Okay. But um, you know, that year with Ali, he was up against Jamie Foxx and Ray. Oh, he wasn't winning that. Um, and if I'm yeah. not mistaken, am I am I mistaken? No, that's I right. Think he was. was that 2004? Okay. Yes. Yeah, that was the same year. He was yeah. up against yep. Jamie Foxx and Ray, and we all know no one was winning that up no, against Jamie Foxx. Okay, but when I watched King Richard, like looking back on interviews that Richard Williams had done. Um, and stuff like that. Will had to have spent a substantial amount of time with this man. If not, then he deserved that award. He earned it because he did a good job right down to the mannerisms and facial expressions and everything. And the, the movie really had me emotional. So I'm just like, he earned that, but he took away from his night. You know, it's like, because when I was talking to my mom a couple of hours ago, she was like, oh, he won the award? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was secondhand. Because I didn't, yes, did. honestly, I didn't know when you guys were texting me about that, I didn't know he had won. I actually looked up, you know, the article that was, it wasn't even an article. I had to look and see who the winners were for the night. Mm -hmm. And then I saw that he Mm -hmm. won. And then I saw that he had the little tearful response. And then Denzel told him, you know, be careful in your highest moments. That's when the devil comes Mm -hmm. for you. Right. Um, So I, I didn't know, which is true. In your highest moments, the devil will come for you. And apparently that whole night, I guess Wanda Sykes and Amy Schumer and a few others had been making fun of the whole entanglement thing. And then um, what's the actress name? She had made fun of them on the red carpet about it in a face just a couple of weeks ago. Laverne Cox. Um, oh. So what did she say? I don't know what she said, but she made some type of off color comment about entanglement to Will and Jada if I'm not mistaken Oh, and that was oh, kind of wow. headlines about you know how she shouldn't have said that and um, I think things just escaped again I'm blaming Jada for all of this I bl- Jada has publicly humiliated Will too many times I think this was another case of her humiliating this man, taken away from his big moment, um, because uh, this would not have happened if none of that other shit had happened on a public pat- platform. And then her creating that red talk table. Yeah, they may have had some good conversations, but some of that stuff you just need to keep in the house, you know, especially when. Yeah. I guess you can look at it and see that Will Will's the breadwinner. At this point, a lot of roles have dried up for Jada or for whatever reason she's not acting like she used to. So Will's She was the on the Equalizer the other day. She's on the Equalizer? She was on the Equalizer, but that was just a guest star role. Oh, okay. I know her in Queen I'm not Latifah. Saying she's not getting no work. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, he he's bringing home about 20, you know, and then he also has his production company, Overbrook, you know, so it's like Come on, you know how hard it is for a black man trying to for black people. I'm sorry, how hard it is for black people to create an, an avenue or a lane for themselves in their profession in Hollywood. Let's not bring any unnecessary, unwanted attention to things that could cause people to look at you guys in a negative light. You know what I'm saying? Um, Right. So I just, I, I don't know. I will tell you this. Samuel Jackson did give Will Smith a hug like my nigga. I've been wanting to do that myself. Yes. <laughs> yes. I saw that. I was like, ooh, Uncle Sam. You are messy. <laughs> the way he looked at him, I know that look, I know that dap, and I know that hug. <laughs> <He> was, <laughs> that, was, that was like, I've been wanting to do that myself uh, for a long time. But yeah, I I just feel that Jada's, I don't know. Do you? Uh, John said, you know, John gave his thoughts. Who's at fault, mm-hmm. Drew, in your mind for all of this? To me, to me, uh, a lot of this lies on, and I'm not. I'm gonna say a lot of it. I'm, I, I'm gonna say Jada only because Jada's dirt is the one that got 
got spread out there. Because mm-hmm. they basically, you know, that whole that whole entanglement situation they, that they were going through was basically them revealing, because that was, they they were forced to have to handle that in the public because they because one one of their situations got messy. Mm-hmm. Will kept his situations clean. None of his pieces ever said nothing. That was, some, that, my- that was some own production like, staff right. people <laughs> trying to outdo. And guess what? Will, Margaret, Margot, and Eva they ain't say a word. You hear me? They want to keep you, working you, in Hollywood. You, 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 you. <laughs> Dwayne Dwayne Martin didn't say anything. Let me tell you something. I was waiting for, oh, I'm about to call her Gina. My God, I'm sorry. I was waiting for Tisha to spill it. It seemed like on so many different occasions, she was so close to spilling it, and she just stopped herself. What you think made her stop? Yeah, she he got his new job on his new series and everything. Mm. Look at God. She kept it. She kept it real. She kept it real copacetic. And like uh, you, you're right. She tiptoed around. It like yes. Like she wanted because she even she even um I think when Lisa when when Lisa Ray was responding about how um Dwayne Martin was got involved with her when she was married to that that um that official or the president over at the Turks and Caicos. Yeah. Okay. How he was so messy and introducing her man to women and all this kind of stuff, and he was living at their house, or mm. he would always he would always be living in their pool house and over there doing whatever. She is like, you know, Tisha wanted to tag in a couple of times, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But uh, but she but she never all the way went there. I just feel like. Um, like I said, Will kept his stuff clean. We never heard about his stuff. He he kept it. It was it could be speculated about and you know this and that. But he never was. He was like I said. He was a golden boy. He kept his things under wrap. The minute the moment Jada did something, her junk got out of. See what she was the thing was she she messed up because she she done put that season thing on that young boy and drove him crazy. And then she done took the, and then she done took it back, <laughs> and y'all, yeah, we know what the power of the P does. It make a man, make it make him drive him crazy. Yeah, I hear man crazy. Look, she 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 drove that boy straight crazy. He couldn't take it no more. He started he started singing was, like a bird. He was acting like a, say, like a, the making, other woman. He was making songs about her and everything. Listen. Mm. That boy, he turned into a he turned into a whole side piece woman. He and he wasn't that lying. Thing, he wasn't lying. Listen. Uh, a, he hurt, a hurt person he, ain't gonna lie. <laughs> not like that. <laughs> listen, not especially not no dude talking mm-hmm. about a woman. Mm-hmm. He he really had his feelings wrapped up in that thing. When she cut it off, that that thing hurt his soul. So he started singing like a bird and was telling everything. So now we'll probably looking at her sideways like, bitch. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. You, you, that's one thing. When you when you in a position of money and a in uh in in uh a uh, status. And you got a whole bunch to lose. You don't mess with th- you don't mess with folks that don't have nothing to lose like you. That's right. That's right. And he didn't have anything. Yeah, that's why I made a song. About exactly. It. Ten years. <laughs> uh, okay. And, and you right on that red table talk. You right. Will was sitting up there. I mean, I mean that man's eyes was red. He was oh, like he was stressed. Man. He aged. He aged ten years by the he end of that damn did. episode. Oh that man God. like he was stressed because he now I got to face this in the public and that just that. Was that right there was emasculating enough Ugh. within all the other stuff, which is like pounding on him. So I feel like he and he in this in this whole thing, this man trying to keep his wife happy because they love each other, but they situation and you know because they got a lot. I don't know how many people have ever watched that show, but they have a lot of history in mm-hmm. that they that they've dealt with in you know in therapy and counseling and trying to be happy as individuals because I feel, I feel like truly their relationship has been over 20 some years but they got into that situation really fast you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying mm-hmm. so they were they were playing catch up and this they like learn they were learning each other so there's a lot of stuff they dealt with a lot of stuff in their own relationship which is how they probably ended up in that whole open relationship thing trying to make each other happy so it's just a combination of things over the years and she done slid up, and this man they had to face all this out here in the public. So, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna put that one. I'm a, I'm gonna give her that one. That's that's gonna be on Jada because for the for the, she lost points for the messy. Mm. Steph, you feel the same way? I do. Um, somebody actually sent me a meme earlier. Uh, 
They said, I thought wives were supposed to talk you out of making a fool of yourself and using your temper. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jada, Jada did not do that. Now, a lot of people, and I'm probably going to get some feedback on this, because, you know, um, after the whole conversation we had about feminists versus womanists, I got a few inboxes on Instagram. Women were not happy with me. Mm. Um, but I'm going to say this. Jada as I said earlier, publicly embarrassed that man over and over. Now, am I saying that Will is innocent or he's a victim? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. But Will did not get on a public platform and mm-hmm. basically brag and flex about sleeping with another woman in Jada's house. Right. Uh, Will did not publicly get on any type of a platform and profess his undying love for a deceased artist. Um, to the point where everybody's like, well, dang, don't you have a husband? You don't care how your husband is? Like, Will didn't do that. Um, I put this on Jada because even last night, you know, he laughed when the joke was first cracked, and then his wife gave him that look, and he immediately jumped on stage. It seems like they had a conversation about mm-hmm. either him not defending her or him that's in certain, and then that it's like he's trying to prove to her, I'm worthy of your love. Oh my and it's God. sad to watch. And I really am interested in the conversation that took place after. I really want to, you know, and it's their business, of course, but I would be, I would want to know like how that conversation went because I feel like Jada is content with her husband looking foolish. Like, if I was married, and I've never been married, okay, but even in my relationship, if it's something that has happened and I've been dishonest or unfaithful, I would never want to put him through any type of embarrassment like that. Mm-hmm. And people are to say, well, Will knew and making this, that doesn't make what she did on Red Table Talk okay. Mm-hmm. It does not. She could have released a statement. She didn't have to sit there and have that man in tears and, and you know, riding together, dying together, and fist bump. I was angry at that i'm like well well they could have stayed he could have stayed they could have stayed quiet like they did with all the other stuff that came out about will mm-hmm. they could have and just you know, let it but you know i guess she felt because august was like really pushing it out there like i said he was making a song after song about this woman i just feel like she put him in a position to have to make a fool out of himself on national tv not once, Red Table Talk isn't a TV show, but, you know, millions saw it. Not once, but twice. Um, and, you know, he's sitting there, you know, you keep my wife's name out of your effing mouth. But she didn't tell August, you keep my husband's name out of your mouth. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. She didn't tell him that. Yeah, so did. it's like, your husband is supposed to protect you, but you're not protecting your husband? Make it make sense for me. Mm. John. Who do you think was wrong in this whole event? Do I have to choose? I really don't care. <laughs> what? <laughs> John don't care about none of this. He'll talk uh-uh, about it. He He'll care about none of it. I love it. <laughs> um, uh, just based on that, don't, and, and <laughs> to pick you back off of what Steph said, if you're my wife, don't put me in a position where I'm going to make an absolute monkey out of myself. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm going to do my best not to embarrass you out in public or in private. Uh, do your best not to embarrass me in public or in private. And just based on all the evidence presented to me today, it just seems like this was a culminating point where uh, he just couldn't take it anymore. Mm-hmm. And um, he wanted to please his wife at all costs, even at the expense of uh, his human dignity. In front of everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And now he's going to have to wear this L um, for quite some time unless his publicist is, uh, has some sort of divine uh, technique to make all this go away, mm-hmm. which I doubt. But um, I, I just feel, just based off the, the reaction to the joke, his reaction and her uh, disposition not being a sunny side one, and then uh, his response to uh, act in that manner to transgress once again and pop five foot eight, one hundred sixty eight pounds, Chris Rock. In the face. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's putting that weight out there. Uh, put that size out there. Listen, <laughs> I think you kind of answered the question. Uh, 
<laughs> Jada. If I had to, if I had to, answer, Jada. Yeah. But. Well, uh, the final question I have on this before we move on to the top ten, and John, you kind of answered, but I just want to put a stamp on it. I'm gonna start with you. Is Will Smith? Is this a black? Is this a blemish on Will Smith's career, where he will not be able to recover from this, John? I think he should be able to separate the two. Um, I'm not going to let this moment sully the effort, his cinematic effort, his uh, television and, and music effort, musical effort. Uh, not going to allow that to sully uh, the amount of work and uh, sacrifice that he put into uh, his body of work. So I'm certain at some point. Uh, he will bounce back from this. Okay. Steph? Um, because it's Will, he's America's sweetheart. <laughs> I think he will recover. Um, however, I don't know why. I just have a feeling that, and I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong because I don't like to see marriage fail, but I don't think his marriage is going to last. Okay. Drew? I okay. don't. I definitely, I don't, I definitely don't see anything lasting within like a week or two. I don't see. I just, you know, it was a slap, and you know, true enough, it was on the, it was on the Oscars. It'll make Oscar history, but this whole thing, it'll blow, it'll blow over in a, probably a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Basically, in, in 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 you know, sad to say it, but it was a, a it, it was a black on black slap. So he's like he's like nobody white. So. <laughs> He slapped, yeah. he slapped him, and that's it. Yeah. You know, a lot of people. A lot of people when they want to, you know, you know, people want to go to go to over to go to his neck because because he because he actually hit someone. But it was a slap, and it was it's done. He got an Oscar out of it. You know what I mean? Not because of it, but he got an Oscar that night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's done. It, it'll be done. Will Will it be fine? Will it be right back? Mm-hmm. He'll be right back where he started from, you know, in a couple of weeks. And I don't foresee it being an issue with him because Will's had an amazing career. Mm-hmm. And people, everybody loves him. You know, people people love him. It's and uh, the joke has always been on Jada, so it's not, <laughs> it's yeah. Will Will I, he, he'll be untouched in this. But he was he was reactive, and I, I feel like I feel like how John feels on the situation. I would have handled it probably different. I probably wouldn't have popped him on site, mm-hmm. but he would have had to see me backstage, and I might have cussed because <laughs> <laughs> you can hear you gonna hear me from the twenty feet. Mm-hmm. I would have been mm-hmm. booming, and the the look on my face it wouldn't have been no kiki ki. It would I wouldn't have put on that you know that I wouldn't have put on that Hollywood smile. You would have knew as soon as the words parted your lips, mm-hmm. my head would have been cocked, would have been cocked twenty degrees to the side, and I'd have been staring you square on. It wouldn't have been no ha ha kiki ki when when no Oscar cameras hit my face. It would have been a moment in time on all the magazines, yeah. and you you would have saw it. You I, you would have felt the energy. You would have stopped right there. He would have moved on to the next topic, but uh, I probably wouldn't have. Because of that situation, like John said, I felt like it did overshadow mm-hmm. because he because he acted in that moment. Because you know it's it's hard to um, it's hard because I I know how my temperament is, and you know, and if I had that kind of a build, because we can all say what we would have done in that mm-hmm. situation. I know what my temperament is like, you know, in those type of situations. That twenty feet would have gave me enough time to think about it again. I might have was wait a minute. I'm, I might have would have made a ten. I might have would have made a ten and went back and sat back down. <laughs> But I, you know, but I, I really, I really wish he would have did it. Like, I, like I said, I, I made a stab. He need, he needs some solanges on his team. That's what it is. <laughs> but he, 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 look, when he couldn't, when he couldn't have made it back out on the stage after the commercial break, mm-hmm. then y'all would have knew I had already had he had he had the uh, backstage. <laughs> so right. I'm I'm very reckless, and the minute that would have came out, there would have been no, there's no thinking. I wouldn't have. That's just me. I'm very reckless. That's your way. Right. And that's you why know I know your, I wouldn't, know your temperament. Yeah, I wouldn't have worked in Hollywood because I there wouldn't have been a slap. I would have bum rushed him. And I would have been on top of no, it. No, I'd have I'd attack with your big ass. <laughs> <laughs> now you know I would have been a listen, you better activate your Super Saiyans because you know I would have been an activated <laughs> <laughs> John, John came in for the yard line. <laughs> he would have, he would have had to catch me from behind because listen let me tell you something <laughs> that thing would have jolted through my spine 
Whoosh. <laughs> and listen, y'all ain't never seen my big behind run. When I run, it's scary. <laughs> Oh my god! When I run, it's oh scary. I, I I think I'm reminded of uh, how hippopotamus run. They look fat and can't move. The mugs, mugs can run. You hear me? And j- y'all would have seen John jumping you. on me, trying to get me. I would have been so. I would have been fired. I, 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 I wouldn't have jumped on your back. I'd have caught your ankles as Judas. <laughs> <laughs> now that's how I'm going down. He catch me up my bad ankles. I'm going down. <laughs> and listen, that would have made me double mad. Then I really wouldn't want to get to him after. <laughs> I was like, John, I'm okay. I promise you, I'm gonna be calm. But I would have took off. I was like, no, man, we'll get him in the park, parking lot, man. <laughs> uh, I, I feel. I will say this, and then we get to the top ten. I think that the way that Will redeems himself, he divorces Jada, and. Mm. And his book, mm. his life book, go ahead and attach Jabari Banks, who plays him on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air remake, to play him in that movie, and we finally see the whole picture. And be truthful and honest. Be yourself. Uh-huh. If it's you done had relationships with these other women, you and Dwayne Martin are in love with each other, you've suffered through depression, mm-hmm. wanting to kill yourself because of Jada, be truthful and honest with it all. And I think that's how he really redeems himself. Jada is a parasite. I think a, a biopic would be perfect in the situation. Yes. A, yes. a real factual. I, I need. I need a what's love got to do kind of biopic. I yes. need to know the grit in the dirt. Yes. I don't want one of them Aretha Franklin biopics where they <laughs> skirt around. They 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 play, they, 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 tip-toe, they tiptoed around the edges. I yeah, need to know what to get. Yeah, they ain't talking about the rapes and all that. But yes, I need. No, nah, they ain't talking about the good stuff. Yeah, and that boy that play him that even cry and laugh like him. I need him to play him in that movie. That boy you know, I have not watched that show. I got I got a free Peacock, and I have not even looked at it yet. I got it saved. Dude, I'm going to start watching that show. Because so y'all good. keep telling me. You just I got, I got I'm, I'm, I'm on it tonight. I got to watch it. And I'm going and I'm going to download his book, too. I'm going to download Will's book, too. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, now, now Steph got me thinking about that book. I need, I need to uh, get the book. I'm definitely going to. I feel like this is really going to. Um, this is really gonna. That's really gonna make me want to look at it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Read that book. Well, when you watch the show, you report back with us so we can all talk about it. Because by the time you get <laughs> caught up, it should be towards the end. And we talked about the first half of it, so we can get caught up on like uh-huh. what the first season was for us. But anyways, top ten. Oh, yeah. Let's get into this top ten. Uh, top ten was voted on by everyone. They changed the voting rec- uh, way that we could vote on Instagram. Can't even do it on Facebook no more, but. They have some new poll stickers, so I have to use that on Instagram. But it's all good. We had a good turnout. The topics were picked by John this past week. So it was uh, daytime talk shows against, uh, shoot, what was it against, John? What was the other one you picked? Uh, top, I think top 10 college football teams of all time. Yes, yes, absolutely. That was the one that you picked. And daytime talk shows overwhelmingly won. So we're going to go through that and ask Drew to join us because he probably has his top 10 list. So um, (laughs) so let's go ahead and get through this top 10. Um, Let's start off with Steph and then I'll go next and then Drew and then we'll save the best for last. The one that picked it, John. So. (laughs) <laughs> uh, real quick before we get started question i always ask was this a hard list for any of you all it was hard for me okay really I, yeah because i used to watch a lot of tv it wasn't hard coming up with the shows it was hard ranking them so. yeah it's hard to rank them yeah i have more than my usual one or two honorable mentions because you know i don't do that yeah but uh yeah. Okay. Drew. So my my ten, I'm gonna have to say my in, in tenth place. I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna go old. I'm gonna go old school on this one. I had to go with Geraldo Rivera. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Because the Geraldo the Geraldo show mm-hmm. for the '80s in the in the early '90s. He was, you know, Geraldo was the one. He was basically the one that popped up because he used to always have a real 
he always had a real gritty controversy. Like at that time, they got that full out brawl with the white supremacists. Yes. And he got busted in the face with that chair. Remember that? How <laughs> did he have that? <laughs> that broken do. nose. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> he had a broken nose, and he kept, he kept hosting the show with a bloody nose <laughs> the whole time. Boy, here, popping up his head. <laughs> <laughs> all piss, all piss, wet stains, broken nose, and he still, he still hosted that whole the rest of that show. Uh, they told that, they told that set up like a, like a uh, um, black college reunion brawl out <laughs> in, the, in the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> he did okay. milk that broken nose for a while. He milked that thing. Uh, okay. Did he have like a little split over it or something? Yes. Yeah, yes. he did. Did he wear like a, a face time. mask after that or just a splint? Just think he wore like a splint over his nose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Who's next? Was it me or you, Steph? Who's second? I forgot. I, it was me. I was supposed to go first. I'm sorry. Me. I forgot. But anyway, I okay. go ahead. Yeah, you go second. Um, my, my honorable mentions were Jerry Springer, Wendy Williams, the Oprah Winfrey show, Donahue, oh. Judge Joe Brown, and Montel Williams. Okay. And my number 10 was Ellen. Ellen, all right. All right. I like it. Okay. My uh, honorable mention is Judge Joe Brown and Montel Williams. And number 10 was Miss Sally Jesse Raphael with them hey. big old glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Red by focus. <laughs> yeah, that's my number 10. What you got, John? We're going to save the best for last each round. What you got for number 10 are your honorable mentions? I got, I got no honorable mentions. Uh, Sally Jesse Raphael is my number 10. All right. With the, with the oversized prescription glasses. <laughs> She's still alive, ain't she? I don't think none of them are yeah. passing. Okay. I was surprised to learn that Phil Donahue was still alive. Yeah, all of them looked like they was in their 70s back then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I was so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, what you got for number nine? You know, before I do my number nine, I forgot my honorable mention. Okay. My honorable mention was the People's Court. Uh, Judge Walker. Yeah. Judge Walker. Because, you know, <laughs> Judge, I had to get into because Judge Walker, he started the whole thing. He did. But but that joke, this thing was so nasty and mean <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was nasty and me just dirt, just low down dirty. Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, but they ain't saying nothing yet, bro. Can they say? <laughs> Let him get situated. He was on go as soon as they got in the courtroom. He was a typical old senior citizen. He, they, they couldn't make a move. They just, move, they just shift the rock in the chair. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, my number nine, my number nine was uh, John Dumpton. I had Sally Jesse. Sally Jesse was. She was controversial with them. She, that was that was the first red baby. That was the first red. When red table talk, it was red table five glasses. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steph, what you got for number nine? The View. Um, when it first came out, not okay. the View that comes on now. Oh, okay. Woke View. Huh? <laughs> not the woke View. The woke view. No, like not that. the woke. I like it when it first came out and the ladies really they would talk. It wasn't all of this craziness. So yeah, but now I can't watch it. Okay. Yeah. That was what was yeah. Meredith. Meredith. Yeah. 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 What was what was the blonde headed girl's name? Um, Elizabeth something. I don't remember her last name, but I know it was yeah, Elizabeth. Yeah, she used to be an actress or something and then yeah. she but I, I love Lisa Ling and yeah. And Baba would show up every Friday. Uh yeah. Okay. I'm surprised to learn Barbara's still alive. I thought Barbara was no longer with us. Nah, she's still no, there. She's kicking, baby. Yeah. Say she don't know who she is, but she kicking. Um, I gotta stop trying to kill. Stop, Drew. <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 
funny, just I didn't mean to say it. I didn't mean to say it like that. I I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't mean to say it like that. She really they say she don't know anybody, so I'm sorry. Bless it, Jesus. Okay. Number nine, uh, for me, and I, I think it just it was just by proxy. I mean, Oprah Winfrey. I had to deal with my mom coming home from work. <laughs> <laughs> turning the TV. I could be watching anything in the front and just turning it straight to Oprah. So um, I, I really liked Oprah when she would just have the musical performances on. I, in the earlier parts of Oprah, big Oprah, when she would, you know, it was yeah. more confrontational <laughs> <clears throat> before she became a billionaire. So Oprah's number nine. What you got for number oh, nine, man. John? Jenny Jones. Oh man, how did I forget about Jenny? You got mm-hmm. oh, Jenny. Let me tell you, Jenny was my girl. Oh man, I forgot about Jenny Jones. Yeah, boy. I think the show got canceled after that. Uh, yeah, yeah. That uh, she she didn't disclose uh, whether or not the person that had a crush on one of the uh, the guests was. A male or female, and mm-hmm. he turned out to be male. So, and he killed her, right? Yeah, he yeah. killed the guy. Yeah, jeez. Yeah, he, 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 laughed, he laughed like Will Smith did. Oh man, wow! He <laughs> laughed. He was on TV. And then he got home. He killed that man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and she never recovered after that one. You're right. Did you end up getting sued? Yes. Mm. Yeah, and that show, that, after that, that show was a wrap. That was it. It was a really good show. It really was. Um, All right, number eight. What you got, Drew? My, 18, my number eight is Montel Williams. Uh-huh. I like you that. know, Montel, because, you know, Montel Williams' show was good because Montel, he get out on that one knee. <laughs> he had one knee on the stage, yeah. and he was at the Y'all remember he said, "I still get brown on there." The still be brown. I got so tired of that lady being on there. That's why I probably have him my top ten. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia Brown, he's coming up with them long freaking nails. She thought like she was fucking. She smoked she a full pack of bitch in the head before she got on that stage. <laughs> Gonna <laughs> tell you about your mother. Your mother, your mother's talking to me right now. She's in heaven. She says she's with your uncle, and um, she knows that you want to do something. She could, baby, Sylvia, Sylvia, get you some psychic like readings. Not... <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> I... No good word. I wasn't supposed to be watching Sylvia because my mama and dad was, was Christian. They are going to be watching fight. But I'm going to I'm missing with Sylvia because you was Sylvia. You were in the spirit around and she was find all your brothers. Uh, oh, you better and turn that off. She used to be on point too. She would be on point now. She would. They'd be there. They'd be hooping and crying. <laughs> they said something about a light blue dress with lace on the back. What does that look like? <laughs> Well, I can't stand you. <laughs> <sighs> but Sylvia had it. We need to find out where Sylvia is. We do need to find out where Sylvia is. No, we don't. <laughs> Let Sylvia stay where she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number eight. What you got still? Um, it was this show that came on BET <laughs> Sister Circle. I love that show with Selena Johnson, Rashawn oh, Ali. So good. Yeah, I oh. loved it. Loved it. I hate they canceled it because they could have canceled um that during the real or whatever. Mm. They could have canceled that and kept Sister Circle. But I yeah. Thought, okay. Yeah. Sylvia Brown died in 2013, yo. Oh no. Oh. God rest, God rest our souls. She was a spirit room with the people. <laughs> Sylvia was a mess, honey. All right. Breathe, man. I am. Number eight for me is Geraldo. Same reason that Drew stated, you know, that I watch it from time to time, but when them <laughs> KKK members was up there and that fool, I watched that live. I remember watching that live. I, I was home, supposed to be. I was home faking sick. Yep, supposed to be on school. It must have been a lot of us home faking because I remember watching it live, man. I don't know. 
Mm. But see, Geraldo, in my area, it came on. Um, it came on in the afternoon. It was like five o'clock. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, he came on like yeah. ten or eleven here. Okay. Um, what you got for number eight, John? I got Ricky Lake. Yeah, Ricky Lake. Yes, sir. That's my show. Getting home from school. All right. Number seven. What you got, Drew? I'm going to take y'all back a little bit, too. My number seven was the John River show. Oh, oh yep. man. How did I forget been, about that? Man, John River show. It, it, first of all, John River is one of my funniest, one of my favorite comedians in history. Yeah, yeah. She was funny. That lady, I tell you, don't give a damn. Yeah. I used to love her going on <laughs> Howard Stern show. Man, she that lady is if y'all ever get a chance, watch her documentary. Mm-hmm. She's one of those kind of people. She is first of all, she you know, she got a heart of gold. Yeah. But the lady was working, she's a workaholic. She was she worked up until she died, basically. Yeah. She oh, was wow. still she was still doing stage shows. Well, it was a freak mm-hmm. thing she that was she still, died, she, right? Wasn't it plastic surgery she went in for? And, the plastic surgery, because you know she she was a, she got addicted to plastic surgery. She yeah. was had complications from a plastic surgery. Now she, in, I think she was in her seventies or eighty, early eighties. She was in the eighties. Still yeah. getting plastic surgeries or something, and she um, but she had a reality show. She had you know her her show. She still always did her comedy. That lady had so much money; it's ridiculous. Yeah. You she, know, she actually her house was she lived in the apartment. Of J.P. Morgan Chase's daughter. Oh wow, wow. Okay. Back, you know, because you know they they thrived during like yeah. the Gilded Age, like in yeah. the, the late eighteen hundred, right? Early nineteen hundred. Yeah. His J.P. Morgan's daughter had an apartment in New York, and that's where she lived. They had these gold gilded walls, and yeah, she would sit down and write the checks and pay for the education of all the people that worked for her. Mm. Wow. Yeah, she did have While a she was in the makeup chair. Yeah, I know she did have a heart. While she was in the makeup chair, black, Latino, whatever, she didn't care. If you work for her, she paid for your children's education. Mm-hmm. And she would sit there in the makeup chair and write them checks out by hand. She knew all her money was going. Wow. She was dope, a dope, dope, dope. Yeah, that lady was, her show was good because she used to always have a controversial people on her show, too. And her, her, her wit is like off the chain. So that was my, that was my, that was my girl. Seven, yeah. seven, number seven, Joan Rivers. Yeah, I like Joan. I forgot about that show. What you got for number seven, Steph? Sally Jesse Raphael. All right. Love <laughs> her. <laughs> okay. Gay miss with Sally. Uh, number seven, probably the second meanest judge behind Wapner, Miss Judy. <laughs> That's a mean old lady. <laughs> Love her. Ah, I love Judy, but she's mean as hell. Um, that ain't mean too. <laughs> just behind Wapner. She at least give you a couple of minutes, you know, before she start judging you, but man. When she started tapping on that wires, bro. <laughs> <laughs> But her, just the faces she would make what made me laugh. The faces would get me every time. Uh, she do tap on that watch. What is she ready to get? <laughs> you taking up her time? <laughs> what about birds? His disposition and indifference to every case. Yeah. Like, <laughs> now she did him dirty now. You know that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she did. All right. I'm certain sure he would have taken a pay cut to go on that new network. Yep. All right. Uh, what you got for number seven, John? I got Montel Williams at number seven. All <laughs> right. Mon- you said Montel Williams? I thought you said Montel Jordan. No, Montel Williams. <laughs> oh, God. You're tired. <laughs> All right. Montel Williams was something that Sylvia Brown, I tell you, that was that was hilarious. But I didn't he start? I forgot about Sylvia. John, didn't he start coming in later? Didn't he start coming on late at night too? Who Montel? Yeah, yeah, they did have his he, he show. used to come on like around ten or eleven o'clock at night. Okay, mm-hmm. I thought. Um, so. what was that? I think they changed him to. Was it like? Was it UPN? No. They mm-hmm. changed the it might have been on the same network, but I know he got like a late time slot. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. Uh, number six. What you got for number six, Drew? All right, Jenny Jones for number six. Jenny Jones. All right. All right. What you got for number six, Steph? Um, divorce court. The judge may bleed. Uh, Version. Yes, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love Judge Maybelline. Yes. Uh, number six, I have Phil Donahue. I used to love Phil Donahue coming on. <laughs> <laughs> you know why you love Phil? Because Phil was messy, just like you messy. Yes. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> them glasses, he going to fumbling with them glasses. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. He wouldn't let nobody get no stuff in. But did, did y'all see that clip that was circulating of of Miss Ayana Van Zant getting that lady together on the stage about her book? On the, was she on Phil, on Phil Donahue show? Yeah, she was on Phil Donahue mm-hmm. show, and she got this lady. I'm gonna play the clip. I'm gonna play the I clip for y'all. That. Listen, hold on. Let me play the clip real quick. Yanla Van Zan and I am a Yoruba priestess and a cultural custodian. This is not our culture. This book is anti-cultural, anti-African, and anti-historical. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because our ancestors, our ancestors have said that our key to our growth is love. This book contains no love. It doesn't encourage love. It doesn't support love. And it dismisses the most loving force on this earth, the African woman. Yeah, so that that was that clip of Miss Ayana going off on that lady, but um, yeah, Phil Donahue was the man. Uh, what you got for number six, John? I got Donahue, man. All right, we're on the same page. <laughs> that never happens with the two of y'all multiple times. At all, I know. Yeah, John, oh, did you ever wow. see that episode with Vince McMahon on there? <laughs> Once upon a time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, number five. What you got, Drew, for number five? Uh, for number five, I got um, The View. The old view. Okay. All right. Yeah. See. With Meredith. All right. What you got for number five, Steph? Judge Judy. All right. Mean old Judy. Uh, number five for me is uh, Judge Maybelline's divorce court. I always like Judge Maybelline. I don't know what happened to her, but I like that divorce court. Yeah. She's on another show, another um, court, show. court show, but I don't remember what it was. But it has nothing to do with divorce. Oh, wow. Okay. I think it's just all types of uh, small claims court uh, issues. Okay. Okay. Uh, what you got for number five, John? I got People's Court, uh, Judge Wapner. All right. Mr. Mean Wapner. That was a mean man. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what you got for number four, Drew? Judge Mathis. You. <laughs> Yeah, you smoke that crack, boy. Uh huh. Uh huh. Go ahead. Uh huh. He's a crackhead. Uh huh. And then, uh huh. And yeah, you went in here and smoked that crack. Judgment for the plaintiff. <laughs> I know a crackhead when I see one. Jasmine and I were talking the day before yesterday, and uh, we were saying something. I said, Yeah, Keith said he thinks the person was on drugs. She said, I'm not surprised. He said, Judge Nassif, Keith thinks everybody on crack. Jazz <laughs> <laughs> Mathis yes, don't do nothing. You was going to be a crackhead. Yeah, let me tell you something. Me and Judge Math, I ain't go to school with crackheads like that, but me and Judge Mathis, we know a crackhead when we see one. You said you have no money. You got you wasn't a thought, bro, but you got no money. You see me at my face and I see the crack. That's what you said. Uh, uh, I'll be quiet. The way he roasted Wendy Williams, man. Oh, man. Did oh, he roast her? Man, he roasted her on her own show. He yeah. roasted her like a comic. He hit her back to back. She ain't had time to breathe. There was only two yeah, people that, that beat her up. That was him and Whitney. Whitney beat her up, too. Listen. 
We, baby, baby, that, that thing, they still play that thing. <laughs> yeah. Windy, windy. windy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number four is. Uh, it's me. Yes, yeah, Steph, what you got for number four? Oh, it's on me. Um, same as Drew, Judge Mathis. All right. Mm-hmm. Number four for me is Ricky Lake. I used to come home. Every day, and I think it'll be a cartoon on it. I didn't want to see, so I turn on Ricky Lake on TV 18. <laughs> what you got for number four, John? I got Jerry Springer. All right, that was the well, king Jerry for a Springer while. Coming on. Yep. Love Jerry Springer, yes, sir. Somebody's ass is getting whooped at 4, 4 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three. What you got, Drew, for number three? My number three is Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. All right. <laughs> Look, and it had to be. It's not the new Jerry Springer. This had to be. This was like the early. Yeah. This is like the late nineties, early two thousands. Jerry Springer. Yeah. Ninety nine, two thousand. Because man, after a while, it just got it got too rehearsed. But you know what's yeah. happening, but it's that was that was the authentic them authentic reactions back then. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, it was. What you got for number three, Steph? Miss Jenny Jones. All right. Oh, Man, I must be the only one that forgot about her. Dog. Uh yeah. number three for me. Jenny is, was my girl. Yeah, yeah. She was good. Oh, have, have, have they had an update on her? Mm-mm. I was, I needed to look because I was watching reruns of the show on YouTube back here a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Hold on, look for Jenny. All right. Well, I'll tell you, my number three is in line with Drew's Jerry Springer. That was my show. So, what you got for number three, John? You know, Judge Judy. Quick <laughs> <laughs> to call only. somebody an idiot. <laughs> 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 yep, she sure do. All right, number two. What you got, John? For number two, I mean Drew, not John. You mean? Yeah, I got. Um, I got from now. My number two is Ricky Lake. All right. Okay. What the you originator. Got? What you got for number two, Steph? My number two is also Ricky Lake. Hey. All right. Number two, all right. My number two, Mr. Mari Povich. <laughs> Mari was my guy. I, the thing I like about Mari is that he always his format ain't never really changed. It ain't. It hasn't been no. ridiculous. Either you are gonna get who's the baby daddy, or uh, it's gonna right. be a follow up, or they going to boot camp. I, for the life of me, I have not figured out how that man lasted so long mm-hmm. on TV for doing mm-hmm. paternity tests. That's all, that's all he has ever done is pater- like paternity tests for the past 25 years. He, he just he got canceled, didn't he? Just, yeah, just it's been canceled. canceled. Just got canceled last week. I mean, he did the makeovers for a while and he did some other stuff too. Because, you know, there was a girl in my hometown that was on Maury a few times. Few, few, few times. And I think she still had found the father of her child. My lord. Crazy. And, okay. and they used to have what they didn't they used to have the one with guess guess who was a man or something like that? He yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, he did have that. Uh John, what you got for number two? I got Judge Mathis. All right. <laughs> You suing for? I'm suing for definition. Definition? <laughs> Don't you mean defamation? <laughs> <sighs> oh Lord! All right, so we getting down to it now. The number one, Drew. What you got for number one? My number one. You know, I had to get it to my girl Oprah. I had to get it to Oprah. <laughs> number one. <laughs> <laughs> Big the Oprah, a little money, Oprah. Most money, biggest giveaway. Oh, yeah. And Oprah always had, she always had, like you said, she always had the bomb music guests on there. She had all the people. Oprah get the people that nobody could get. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, all the people. I saw the other day on YouTube where, um, remember Milestone, which was Casey and JoJo and After Seven and Babyface from the Soul Food soundtrack? Yep. They performed on yep. Oprah. 
Like I think that was like one of the few very live performances they did of that one song. So yeah, she did get the people. What you got for number one, Steph? Maury Povich. All right. <laughs> that cam- my Maury. Let me tell you something. That cameraman deserves an Oscar, uh, uh, Emmy because <laughs> but he, the the road, that, I ain't never seen a, I never seen a cameraman fall never never, never ever <laughs> alright my number one my main man Judge Mathis I could watch Judge Mathis anytime of the day. <laughs> Jasmine my, called it she said it <laughs> my favorite clip is him pretending to smoke a crack <laughs> ah, when Judge Mathis did that, I fell out. I forgot what episode that was, but I was done for the day. I need a YouTube link in my inbox. I'm going to say it to you, Drew. <laughs> We need, to, we need that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to send it to y'all. Joe, <laughs> Joe, what's your number one, man? Just Joe Brown. <laughs> ah. Just yeah. Joe. <laughs> I love Just Joe Brown, man. Is he still on, John? Just, no, he was supposed to... Um, do another show back in 2019, but it never caught steam. So, mm. okay. That's what I was about to ask about Judge Mathis, but I see now he is still on the air. Oh, yeah, he's still yeah. on. Judge Joe Brown be laid oh, yeah, back yeah. in his seat. Like, didn't they change like, the format of his show or something? Or the night? What was it? Didn't they, they change something about the show, didn't they? I have no I don't clue. think so. I'm going to look and find Come out. Come on, Judge so. Mathis? No. Mm hmm. It's the same format, just there's. What five people in the in the stands due to COVID? Yeah, yeah, you're right. So listen, y'all. I'm gonna watch Judge Mathis tonight. I, <laughs> before we finish up, I got a special guest that's gonna come on real quick right now and give they top their number one talk show of all time. I want y'all to welcome Mama Johnson to the studio. <laughs> My mama's here, y'all. <laughs> Good. 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 I'm good. I'm good. I'm better than good, girl. I'm rested. And everything is going, everything is working out. So, um, okay. Keith told me to come in his office and I was going to leave. He told me he wanted me to um, get my number one uh, talk show host. Well, honey, I'm going to tell you, just like my mama say, nobody better than Ofa. <laughs> my mama called her Opa. <laughs> and no matter how Keith would go against her, she would say, Honey, you just shut your mouth because ain't nobody bad than Opa. Opa get people cars and money. You get a car, you get a car, I get a car, everybody get a car. <laughs> and my mom went to her grave saying Opa was the baddest girl around. Because if it had not been for Opa, nobody else. She paved the way for everybody. Yeah. She she even paid the way for a uh, Judge Mathis. Sure did. Now I like him. I like Judge Mathis. But ain't nobody better than my girl Ofa, because Ofa loved everybody. Mm-hmm. And she's fair. And she's equal, as my mom say. Right. I just thought I would make y'all laugh. I like that moment. Well again, that's my mom. And um, as I said earlier in the show, she's uh has a bling bling room on thursdays on facebook live at 7 to seven fifteen p.m she goes live every thursday and every so often she'll go on sunday just keep a lookout on her facebook page antoinette johnson again um right. real quick here drew thank you so much for joining us today we got all entangled in that conversation earlier <laughs> about will and and everything with the oscars so that 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 was our episode today. Thank you for doing the top ten. As uh, always, always great to be here with y'all. Always a good time. Yes, yes, yes. John, tell them where they can find and support us at, please. You can find us on the big three: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, on Facebook, you can reach out with us or interact. It's the Short Desk um, Podcast or at the Short Desk Podcast on Instagram too. 
on Instagram, not Instagram, but Twitter. It's just the short desk. Uh, email, you can email us. Uh, email address is the short desk podcast at gmail.com. What's that website that I can completely forget every time? Good pod. <laughs> Good pod. <laughs> five star rating. This is going to be a running gag every week. <laughs> uh, don't forget about uh, Apple iTunes and Apple Podcasts. Please leave us a five star rating, hopefully, and a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Spotify, please leave us a five star comment or a five star rating. They don't offer comment, but you know what I meant. Thank yes, you. thank you. And shout out to the city that we want to give a shout out to for supporting us. This city is Windhook, Germany. Uh, Ooh, I'm no, I'm sorry, Windhook, Nambia. I apologize. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is one of the uh, cities that supports us, that has downloaded us, one of over the 542 cities in the country that has supported us uh, with downloading. So thank you again for supporting. Um, my mom wants to say something real quick before we get out of here. Mama, go right ahead. I just want to say a quick prayer for the podcast. God is so good and he's uh, worthy to be praised. And so I just want to pray with everyone. If we will join together in prayer. Lord, we just thank you today, God. We honor you. We bless you. God, we thank you for this fellowship. Most of all, God, we thank you for gathering your young people together together. God, and taking that podcast where they their little minds could never imagine they're going. And so, God, we just bless you and we honor you. And, God, we ask you, God, to keep them humble before you, God. Keep their unity, joy, peace, and love and happiness, God. And, God, we just bless you for uh, John and Step and Drew and Keith on the podcast today, God. We ask you, God, to do a super blessing God let the super God go over the natural God and just bless them in every areas of their life but cause them God to humble themselves and submit them their lives totally to you God God as you bless them God all they have to give you back God is their life so God we ask you God to continue God to chase after them God Holy Ghost and till they come to their knees and say I yield I yield God what would you have me to do God, we thank you and we love you. Bless their homes, bless their families. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, Mama, thank you so much. We are the Short Desk Podcast. Holla at your boy. Son, I'm happier than a pig shitting in tall cotton. <laughs> <laughs>